Well, a fine good afternoon, everyone. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. I am in Orwell, Vermont today, and this is the first Congregational Church, also known as the Orwell Congregational Church. This is an historic church in Orwell, Vermont. The current meeting house was built in 1843 and is one of the state's best examples of Greek Revival ecclesiastical architecture. And it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2001. Let's get a little closer to it since I am on the, uh, on the, uh, I'm near the street. Uh, this is the town center of Orwell right here. And this road, although Main Street in Orwell is also Route 73. Busy time of day. It's um, about 21, well, 12.39, yep, uh, p.m. And there's a school a couple of doors down from here. So, anyway, busy time of day. All right, so the First Congregational Church stands prominently in the village center of Orwell, near the western end of an oval drive on the north side of Main Street, which is also Vermont Route 73. This is the Oval Drive right here. It is an imposing single story brick building with a gabled roof and two stage tower. Gable means that the, uh, it's the gable end that typically faces the street in a Greek Revival style building. We can see the two-stage tower right here. This one's square, and that one has the belfry, so the clock tower first, and the belfry on top. You can see the louvers over the uh, bell tower. It's, uh, those louvers mainly are used maybe to keep the birds out, but they're open pretty wide to let the sound out. So, looks like there's a clock tower on other faces, so that's pretty nice. The first stage of the tower is square with corner pilasters and houses a clock. The second stage is an octagonal belfry with four rectangular louvered faces separated by angled faces with paired fluted ionic columns. It is topped by an octagonal cupola. So octagonal just means it has eight sides and a cupola is that uh, piece at the very top. In this case, on this building, a, a belfry, so a bell tower. The front facade has a fully pedimented gable above an entablature supported by four brick pilasters on two fluted Doric columns. The columns and inner pilaster demarcate a sheltered recess housing the main entrance. Well, that's a lot of blah, blah, blah. Let's break that down, shall we? Okay, so Doric column, uh, there are two in the front and the Ionic are at the top of the belfry. So Doric columns, so they're, they're talking about two stages of um, ancient Greek columns. Doric is the most basic, and these are, the, these are flanking the front door. We can see that they, they have uh, this lovely um, square topping, uh, top, topper, and then the flutes, it's, it's not uh, smooth, it has uh, ridges, if you will, and those ridges are flutes, right there and there. The Ionic columns are up here. This is the second level of the ancient Greek columns, and they're the ones with the scrolls. So these right here, the scroll work. Of the three orders, of the uh, ancient Greek columns. I've always loved the Ionic. The third kind, which is not represented in this church, would be Corinthian. Very fancy. Pilasters are columns built into the wall. So, these here are the pilasters. You'll see these on a variety of churches. 
uh, practical. I swear, it's almost every church I have filmed for my channel. Um, the entablature is this piece right here. Goes all the way around the building. This is the pediment, the triangular piece at the top, which fits nicely in the gable. <laughs> the church was built by the membership and retains much of its original form. The sanctuary windows, originally clear glass, began to be replaced by stained glass memorial windows in the late 19th century. One, the children's window, is unique in New England, as it was paid for by the children of the Sunday school in memory of other children of the church. Wow, I can hardly wait to see that window because um, I know you've been with me through a lot of cemeteries and there are always so many children's graves, aren't there now? Too many, truly too many children's graves. The church is an independent congregation, quote unquote, gathered in 1789. The stained glass windows are not simply colored glass, but traditional stained glass windows, which illustrate Bible stories and teachings such as Jesus and the children, the Trinity, and more. The sanctuary, which seats approximately 350, that's 350, has its original pews, many of which were originally, quote unquote, family pews, purchased or rented by members of the church when the building was built. As recently as late, 19, as late as the 20th century, some members still sat in their family's traditional pew, although the seating is now open to all. The fine acoustics lend themselves to organ concerts, congregational singing, and makes easier preaching from the large Victorian pulpit. Music has long been a hallmark of the church, with organists serving for many years at the fine hook tracker organ built in the 1860s and restored in the early 1990s. This small instrument of only 16 stops, uh, two keyboards, including the pedal board, is nonetheless a versatile instrument. The church's parsonage at the corner of Main and Church Streets was built circa 1825, originally in the shape of a cross, but the two additional wings have since been removed. All right, well, let's take a walk around of this place, and let me just say that I was uh, earlier today in Shoreham, Vermont, filming the first congregational church there, and this one is almost identical. I have to say, which one is older? Let's see, which one is older? This one is just barely older. This one's 1843, and the one in Shoreham is 1846. Wow, I have to wonder. Same builder? I mean, even even these ionic columns up here, uh, this octagonal belfry is so familiar. When I was uh, looking for my my sheet that I printed off to read to you, I thought, oh, I'm in the wrong town. <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong sheet. But no, no. Uh, I mean, the clock tower, the belfry, holy cow. It's just, uh, it's just amazing, isn't it? All right. Let's take a walk. If you want to see the photographs, by the way, you can see them on Instagram or um, or Facebook under Traveling for History, 1L and Traveling. You can follow me on either of those places, too. Uh, let me see. You can follow me on uh, Twitter, if you wish. Traveling for High 1. Traveling for H-I with a numeral 1. I'm looking at how this place needs a paint job uh, up on the um, clock tower. Let's see if you can see that too. If you're thinking it looks kind of dark out, uh, you'd be correct. It is supposed to thunderstorm all afternoon. I like a thunderstorm, but I don't like to be outside in one. <laughs> Let's walk a little closer to this bad boy and take a look see you can definitely see that the handrails are a uh, newer vintage than the church itself You can see that there's a paint job needed up here. 
maybe with some, I can't imagine it'd be plaster outside, but I don't know. We also see that there are hooks, four of them actually, one here, one there, and then where's the other set? There's two, can't see them. I see them with my naked eye. You can see the first set there. Oh, there they are. One is here, and the other is there. I'm guessing for banners. And look at that. Uh, over the door looks like it would have had a transom. Transom window is an, an early form of air conditioning. It would let the hot air out. So um, hot air rises, cool air would come in through the doors, hot air would rise and come out the transom window. And it continue to circulate until the, uh, the door, uh, the window is closed. We have a side entrance on this side and a side entrance on this side which makes me think that maybe men entered on one side and women on the other because uh, churches in that era tended to have two entrances, one for men, one for women. All right, well, you see it has a, a tall stone foundation. Does have gutters on the building, that's good. Helps keep the water away from the building. We want that. One door here, which is locked. And has no door handle. See, no door handle. And uh, here we have this side door, not handicapped accessible because of the stair, the step, I suppose. And you see doors that lead into, I'm guessing, the church proper. Stained glass windows. Hard to see that they are stained glass. I'm not even sure my photograph is doing it justice, to be honest. Hopefully, you can see all the chairs in here. Set up with uh, tables. Sure, tables and chairs. These have storm windows still on them. You can see the uh, this chair right here. Don't know if you can see anything else in there. Well, this is the second time in a week. I have seen cables like this, which go, in this case, along the back side of the building. See? That right there. I wonder if that's for grounding. Huh. I'll bet you it is. This, uh, piece right here makes you think it is but if you folks know let me know you know I'm curious about everything under the Sun if you don't well I'm curious about everything under the Sun
And another window. Oh, that's an old style table. I don't know if you can see anything besides my my uh, rig. Of course, we have a gutter end, which will splash on that slate and away from the building. Hopefully, you get away from the building. I think that's for septic. Maybe. But if you, anyone out there knows, uh, these do have stained glass. The exterior window is cracked, but the stained glass is intact. Look at that beautiful stone. Bird's nest. See the bird's nest? Right there. And the hose. I don't know about you, but it reminds me of a horse harness. Anyone else get that vibe? And we're back around to the front of the building. Love that kind of angle. Yeah, so this is Patricia and I am traveling for history. If you like my content, please subscribe to my channel, 182 and growing nearly every day. So join us, join me. I upload every day of the week and uh, I'd love to uh, count you amongst my sub subscribers. If you have suggestions for other videos you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments below. So until I see you, Again, you have a great rest of the day. Thanks for watching. Bye.